After this video, you are going to forget about subdags. You will never use subdags in your data pipelines anymore. Why? Because you are going to discover task groups and they are much easier than subdags. But before discovering task groups, I've put a lot of work in that video, so the only thing I ask you in favor is to subscribe to my channel right now and smash the like button. This will help me a lot. If you've done that, you are ready to discover the task groups. If you remember, in order to add a subdag in that data pipeline, we needed to add two things. First, the subdag operator that we call right there, and a function subdag underscore parallel underscore dag returning a dag. If you open the file subdag underscore parallel underscore dag dot py, you have the function, and with dag, so we instantiate a dag object. with the tasks that we want to group together. And finally, we return a DAG object. So as you can see, it is pretty complex to add a sub DAG in Airflow. Now, let me show you the huge difference with task groups. Go back to parallel underscore DAG and let's import task group from Airflow dot utils dot task group, import task group. Once you have the task group object, you are ready to group your tasks together. So let's copy task group. And right there, we can instantiate a task group object with task group. Then we specify the group ID, processing underscore tasks. As processing underscore tasks, basically we create an object here, task group. And from there, we have to specify the tasks that we want to group together under the group processing underscore tasks. In our case, those two tasks, task two and task three, save the file and paste the tasks like that, just under the object processing underscore tasks. Save the file, then copy processing underscore tasks, remove processing and paste processing underscore tasks like that. Remove the subdag operator, save the file, and you are done. There is nothing more to do in order to group your tasks together. That's it. No function to create, no need to instantiate a DAG object, no need to take care of the DAG ID corresponding to the subdag, and so on. You just need to instantiate a task group with a group ID, put your tasks just under the task group, and that's it. So once you have saved the file, if we go to the user interface of Airflow and refresh the page, as you can see, we obtain this box right there in blue. And that means it is a task group object. If you click on it, you can see the two tasks, task two and task three as expected. So we get the exact same result, but with much less complexity than with subdags. Let me show you that it works. If we turn on the toggle, then trigger the data pipeline, trigger, then grab view, click on the group. As you can see, task one is running. And now if we wait a little bit, task two and task three are running as expected. And finally, task four. So as you can see, it works and it is much easier to implement than subdags. So please right now, as a best practice, use task groups instead of subdags. And I truly believe that at some point, subdags will be deprecated as they are pretty useless. Now we have task groups and the fact that they bring many drawbacks such as deadlocks, complexity, and the sequential executor, which is used by default. Now we know how to use task groups in order to group tasks together in our data pipelines. Let me show you how powerful they are. Indeed, what about if you want to create subgroups inside a group? How can you do that? For example, you might have a use case where you have multiple tasks here, task one, two, and three, and you want to group those tasks according to the processing framework that will be used by the different tasks. For example, we might have task two using Spark and task three using Flink. How can you group those tasks in different subgroup? Well, let me show you this. Go back to your code editor and let's create a new group with task group. This time we call it spark underscore tasks. 
and we instantiate an object spark underscore tasks as well. Then we put the task three under that task group and we can copy the same group with the task and this time we call it flink and flink underscore tasks like that. Then you can save the file. And now you might say, wait a minute. Here I have two tasks with the same task ID, task three and task three. So this won't work. Well, in theory, yes, but not under a task group. What will happen here by default is that the task ID of the task under the group will be prefixed with the group ID spark underscore tasks in that case. So here for task underscore three under the group spark underscore tasks, you will get the task ID spark underscore tasks dot tasks underscore three by default. Same for flink underscore tasks right there. Here the task ID will be flink underscore tasks dot tasks underscore three by default. So if you save the file and go back to the UI, then refresh the page. As you can see, we don't get any error. And if you click on processing underscore tasks, you can see two subgroups, flink underscore tasks and spark underscore tasks. If you click on spark underscore tasks, you can see task underscore three. And if you click on flink underscore tasks, you can see task underscore three under the group flink underscore tasks. So as you can see, task groups are super powerful and super flexible. So forget about subdags and go with task groups.